Now, now in neural network, we're going to continue to introduce the activation function and when you're supposed to use them. For this one, I'm going to talk about sigmoid and 10H. This one is going to be sigmoid. Um, for sigmoid, I will put zero here so we can see what's happening. And this is one. Okay, and then for this one, I just have zero. Uh, so for this one, for example, when you are close to 0 0.5, you're almost zero. So it is not reaching exactly zero. And then this is, it will look something like this. So in this plot, if, if you get any value close to zero, you're going to be on this area of um, your activation function. And the good thing about this is because it is more steep, so the steeper that you are, more learning is going to happen. This is very important in choosing your activation function. I'll show you why. So right now, based on this, I'm telling, I'm saying that wherever I am very steep, that means that my learning is higher. The places that are, you're more like a line, uh, it's more like a straight line, the learning is going to be very slow and small because the gradient is going to be small. So based on that description, uh, the gradient for uh, sigmoid is going to look something like this. So we have lower values here, and then when you're going, when um, you're going toward the steepness, you are getting to the maximum, and then again at the end you're going back down to the minimum. So the parts that were very steep you're gonna have m m higher gradient, which means the learning happens the most in that area. We're gonna plot 10H right now too, so we see how it looks like, and then we're gonna talk about it. Um, again, for 10H, okay, so there's a difference here. Right now, in sigmoid, in sigmoid, whatever value you're getting, you can only output between zero and one, and you can't even do zero or one. You're just getting close to zero and one, okay? Uh, and so that, keep that in mind. And then we're gonna look at 10H. 10H is going to be able to give you both positive and negative. So sigmoid is between zero and one. The output is going to be between zero and one. And then uh, for 10H, Um, I put the zero in the middle here, and then I just go all the way here, minus one, and I go here one, okay? And then we have zero here, minus one, minus two, one, two, three. Okay, so um, now when we are talking about 10H, you're going to have the same shape, but it is between minus one and one. Now, if you want to draw the gradient, it's again going to be very similar to the gradient of sigmoid. It is a little bit more intense. So when you're getting here, so you will have a shape like this. So now let's talk about what they can do and where you should use them. Okay, let's first go with sigmoid. Sigmoid, as you can see, we start from somewhere around zero to one, right? So any output that comes from a neuron a neuron that has activation function of sigmoid it can only produce values between zero and one and not exactly zero and one it's going to travel close to zero and one what that gives you is a probability so if you want to do classification you cannot use step function because step function cannot learn and i tell you why mathematically mathematically step function is not capable of learning okay because of this because when we're talking about learning we are talking about the gradient gradients are very important gradients either in activation function or in loss function if i have a step function like i have zero here and i have one and then my step function looks like this okay so this is a step function instead of Using sigmoid, I'm just going to use step function. Why not? If you want to do binary yes or no, you can just do yes or actual yes or no. And you can actually get zero and one. But this cannot learn. The reason is gradient would work with steepness. So when you have a vertical line here, 
it, the gradient for this or derivative for this is not defined, okay? So when, when the gradient is not defined, it doesn't know how to learn here. And then again, you go to this area and it's all flat. So the gradient or the derivative is zero. The gradient or derivative for this is zero. So learning is not happening. So you cannot use a step function for a complicated neural network and um, even if you just want to get the binary values of zeros and one. But you can use sigmoid. It is still completely acceptable to use sigmoid um, in your output layer. Even though it's never going to reach zero or one, it will give you a probability. Okay, so it will tell you, so there is a 70% chance that my answer is yes and 30% chance that my answer is no, okay? So it's true that you're not getting a solid yes or no, but you have probability, which makes it even better because then you can, you can set the threshold on different levels. For this one, you cannot set a threshold, but for this one, I can say, okay, so my cutoff is going to be at 80%. So anything below 80%, just say no. Anything above 80%, say yes. So we said uh, sigmoid is okay for using it in the output layer. And uh, as the shape shows, you're using it for um, binary classification mainly. But why can't we use it in hidden layers? What is the problem that we can't use it with hidden layers? There are a couple of problems. When you, when you hear people say tanh is the improvement of sigmoid, it is and it is not. It is not because 10H is not used in the output for binary classification, which sigmoid is used for. Sigmoid is used for the binary classification in the output layer. So 10H is not exactly an improvement of sigmoid, but in some cases it had improved its ability. But if we are talking about using activation function in hidden layer, 10H would do better than sigmoid. Because, because of multiple reasons. One, sigmoid, sigmoid doesn't have real zero. As we said, it's going to travel towards zero, but it does not have zero. So, so no zero. And why is that a problem? When you are going through hidden layers of neural network, some of the neurons are gonna be turned off because they output zero. And that would help learning happen because you don't care about the information that is coming from the neuron that's already off. Okay, so having zero in your hidden layers are important because you can reduce the number of features, reduce the number of neurons that are sending signal to the next neuron. So you're basically simplifying what is happening. So getting a zero is important and sigmoid is not capable of getting zero. The sigmoid is not able to output zero. So it doesn't matter how irrelevant that feature or that neuron is, it will still send some small signals. It, it is still not off, okay? So sigmoid cannot turn neurons off. That is one of the reasons that you don't want to use it in hidden layer. It's going to cause problem. So if you have a very deep neural network and you're using sigmoid in your hidden layer, you're going to have vanishing gradient problem, which means that we, which means that it will, it will reduce the importance of the features that are further away from it. And um, the activation function gradient is supposed to work in favor of your data. And that's why it is important to choose your activation function correctly. So now the third reason that sigmoid is not good for hidden layer is because no negative. You cannot, you cannot output any negative number. Any, anything that you give in, you will get a value between zero and one out, okay? So no negative number. But then you might ask, well, why, why does that matter? If I am... I want to reach this green point here, in the middle here, okay? And I am starting from here. Sigmoid tells me you're far away, go forward. I go forward. And again, I stop here. And Sigmoid tells me you're far away, go forward. I go forward. 
I stop here. And the sigma again tells me you're far away. So I go forward and I'm here, okay? So I was there and I was going forward and it was fine because I was going toward the, the place that I had to be. But now I have passed this point because my step was bigger than the last point, right? So now sigmoid again tells me you're not there, go forward because it doesn't have a negative number. So now even though my relationship with that point had changed, so that means that I need to decrease instead of increase. Since I don't have negative, since sigmoid cannot give me negative number, it just says that you're not there. So it's going to be more complicated for me to figure out what I have to do because if I have like positive and negative direction, then you would say, well, yeah, you are far, but you have to go, like you have to decrease instead of increasing. Okay, so now we talked about sigmoid. Now this, this part is very interesting. You probably heard that whenever you're using 10H, you're supposed to use, it's better, not supposed to, but I mean, you're supposed to kind of, you're supposed to use a zero center data. Um, so why is that important? If you look at the gradient of 10H, you will see that over around zero, you have the highest amount of learning. So that means learning, there's a lot of learning happening around zero and any value close to zero. And then again, you spread out when you're going further away, again, you're gonna have the vanishing problem because it's gonna get saturated, it's gonna get way, way smaller values. So all, so you see that this is, this have to be more centered, but this, all of these things are happening around zero, right? So you have the most amount of learning happening around uh, the values close to zero. So when you take what, what you do when you center your data close to zero, you get the mean, the average, and then uh, you, you keep the average at zero and then all of the other values are going to be around your mean. So that means you're getting, if, if your data is not, doesn't have outliers, that means that you gathered most of your data around the zero, which is mean, around the center. So when most of your data is around the center, that is where the most amount of learning happens. That is why 10H works. That is why 10H works well with centered data, the zero centered data. Because we are attractive, we are, we are getting the mean, we take the mean as zero, and we spread all of the other data around it, okay? If you don't have outliers, there's a very good chance that most of your data are closer to your zero. And if your data is closer to your zero, you are exactly in the position that most amount of learning happens in 10H. So 10H is gonna be very useful. But again, as you can see, so your data have to be all centered around zero so you will do best, right? So what's gonna happen if you are centering your data but you have lots of outliers? Those outliers are going to really affect you because the outliers, because you're centering zero and then most of your data are outliers so your data are going to be further away. So that means your training is going to be slower. In those type of cases, you probably wanna use Relu or leaky relu.